Good morning, Austin. Welcome to the Fans View KAZI 88.7. Travis Kent, alongside, well, not, actually not alongside today, looking across the room <laughs> at Douglas Washington. Douglas sitting behind the board. He'll be pulling double duty, and I appreciate him taking on that responsibility today. Douglas, thank you for running the board. Teamwork. Sitting to my right, as usual. KV24 is Corey Mose. Yeah. Happy Friday. NFL Com. I've been listening to Com. Oh, oh, I was watching some uh, Big Men Run yesterday. I <laughs> love that. That's almost the equivalent of March Madness games. I, yeah. I, am I okay to say that? Are you guys going to run me out the room that I already started on a bad point to say that? I love it. Mm-hmm. I'm just so impressed by that. And then, you know, I like RG3 even talked about there was a big man that ran, and he ran so fast that he gave the comparison to everybody. And he was like, hey, that's the equivalent of a 180-pound defensive mm-hmm. back running a 4-2. So mm-hmm. if that big man ran that 5, I believe it was like a 5-2. Five, five, two, two, mm-hmm. yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah. That's what it was. Oh, my God. And it was fluid. Mm-hmm. But he didn't look like yeah. he was struggling. So. Mm-hmm. Well, beforehand, he said, you know, during the player interviews, he mentioned he's going to shock people with his time. And so, I mean, he called it. Yeah, he called it. <laughs> so. I mean, Byron Murphy at, at 285 that we went in yesterday? No, he actually went in at 296. Oh, he did? Okay. Yeah, pretty heavy. Four, four, 487? Yeah. I mean, 488 and 487 were his, his two times. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you think about... You stack another 70 pounds <laughs> on a large human being, <laughs> and it only slows him down about three tenths, three and a half tenths of a second. Incredible. So, so wait, sitting to my left, Jamal January back in uh, studio. Absolutely. Jamal, good to have you, man. Great to, great to be back. Hey, happy March, January. That's All right. right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's the first. Corey, it's the first day. God, Corey gave me this glare. Uh, it's the first of the month. <laughs> <laughs> belated, belated happy birthday to all the people that finally got to celebrate another birthday yesterday. <laughs> the leap year babies. Um, Tyrese uh, Halliburton. Uh, t- uh, Tyrese yeah. Halliburton? Yeah. I didn't yeah. realize that. He turned six. <laughs> <laughs> That's always a that's always a weird deal. Um, uh, I've never. I don't know that I know anyone personally who's ever been born on leap day. I know. Yeah. I do know some people who um, were going into labor late and decided to push oh. as long as they could so that they didn't. It, Look, it's, it's either an oddity and you're okay with it, or it kind of stinks because you don't know if you, <laughs> you celebrate the 28th, you celebrate the March 1st, right, what do you do? Right. Yeah. Um, and so, uh, but uh, I, 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 um, I had heard that, um, like, um, uh, uh, driver's license authorities would make you put March 1st, but I actually heard yesterday that that's not true. I think you, you can actually okay. get... February 29th on your ID. I would hope so. Uh, yeah, because I'm. I mean, I certainly wouldn't. I, I go, no, dude. I'm not born March 1st. I'm born yeah, February 29th. Literally. I mean, I'm. I'm sorry that it comes around once every four years. <laughs> That's not my fault. <laughs> so. I mean, you get to set records. I mean, to your point, Jamal, Tyrese Halliburton is that the the youngest. NBA All Star. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Six years old. Yes, so. That's right. right. That's, that's legit. All right, I got a, um, I got some odd notes I want to get out first. Huh. All right. Um, so this week in college basketball, Wisconsin and Iowa. Ooh, yeah. No, it, and since in the last 25 years, and I don't know how much further you'd have to go back to actually find this out, but in the last 25 years, between men's and women's college basketball and the NBA, over 300,000 games. And Wisconsin this week scored 95 points, shooting 70% from the three-point line, (laughs) and had five turnovers. (laughs) So the last team to score 95 points, 70% are better from the three-point line, and five turnovers or less in a game. And they lost, 105-95. How do you play nearly a perfect basketball game and get beat by 10 points? (laughs) <laughs> like what's the coach supposed to go in the locker room and tell him to do shoot better turn the ball over to us uh, I, I think that not only was that just the most amazing game ever I think as the coach 
you're running around hitting your chest. I think that's what the coach is talking about. Mm-hmm. See, that's what happens when y'all listen to me. Look how perfect you played, and then you just carry that forward. I think you just got to carry that forward and just say, see, that's what happens. What Now, what happened? I don't understand why we lost, but I appreciate that you guys did everything I asked you to do. <laughs> and then when you look back at the box score for the yeah, five turnovers, do, is that is that one of those times where if you were the person, let's say, so there were five turnovers, let's say if three below Belong to me. Am I? Can I still feel okay that? Uh, well, you know, we still only end it with five turnovers, even though I <laughs> myself did exactly. three of them. I think we all walk out of there just feeling really good. Yeah, for sure. I just don't I understand. Think, I'm looking at this box score. I just don't. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's exactly what I'm doing I just too. Don't understand. Just think, dude, I, what? It's just. I guess taking 26 threes, maybe that's. And at what point is it a heat check? I mean, when, when you're hitting like that, so, I get, like, do, right. you, so, you, so you just tell them, just keep shooting, I, or let's back off. Maybe this has been luck. Because that's always you, always, you always think of of it like that, right? Yeah, I think if I'm 26 threes in and we're still shooting 70%, <laughs> I, think I'm, I, I think every time out, I'm going, why, why are y'all throwing the ball inside the three-point line? <laughs> like, yeah. Like, yeah, we got to heat check ourselves. We, let's just keep throwing them up. Mm-hmm. Another quick thought. Another quick basketball note. Oh. This week... Young lady named Kiana Christmas from New York name. posted a quintuple double. Oh, double digit in scoring, Sheesh. rebounds, yeah. assists, Ooh. steals, and blocks. Yeah. yeah. There are two other quintuple doubles. I bet you can guess who it, it was an NBA. There's an NBA one. I think I know. And I bet you can guess. I want to know who Jamal, as the young guy, guy. I want to know who he thinks it is. It's, um, gosh, I literally just watched it. They talked about it um, when they did that ultimate draft. So they helped you. So somebody helped you out. I mean, (sighs) some old commentator helped you out. Uh, uh, Is it... Nah, I already know I'm going to get it wrong. Is it David Robinson? I feel like I'm wrong. No, not, no that's not that's, that, that, that's not a bad that's not a bad yeah. choice. I I'm at, I'm gonna guess Hakeem the Dream. It was not. It's a little older than that. Whoa. Will, Will Chamberlain. Will, oh, a lot older than that. Yeah, Will oh, Chamberlain. I'm always and it's, been, RD. it's it's been done another time though. And this person is also, I believe, a WNBA Hall of Famer, although she didn't do it in the WNBA. She also didn't do it when she played college ball. Oh, you got to be talking about Miller then. No. no. Wow. Good, good guess. Because she didn't make it to the WNBA. Good guess, right. Mm. Uh, What's her name? Not, not Swoops. One of the most pro. No, that's, that's, that's a decent guess, it's, too. It's, the, she played at USC. Um, Actually, she played at USC? She, uh, she didn't. Okay, then that, that was. Played at Tennessee. Oh. <gasps> uh, well, no, because that's still there. There's some bangers that came Candace out of there. No, good guess though. Lord have mercy. Wow. Tamika Catchings at uh, Duncanville uh, High School had a quintuple double. Okay, well, okay. I didn't know she was from Texas, so yep. that is mm-hmm. how. Okay, I got to do this. I know you got some more points. <laughs> how, how did she get out of? How did she get out of the state and go to another orange team? That I have no earthly idea. You got to find that out. Um, <laughs> next time you got free time, <laughs> Corey. I'm pointing at Corey, everybody. Like you guys can see, it's Corey. That's got to be the story. We got to find out how she got out of Texas. Like, yeah. did she, well, she visit Pat another, Summit? She went to another UT. Yeah. I'm dying <laughs> to know that. You know, I, I met a, a young lady uh, when I first moved here, and she grew up right around here, right over in Westlake. Uh, went to Westlake High, and uh, she was a she was a runner, and she did go run track at UT. Mm-hmm. But yes, Tennessee, and to her, she just wanted to get away. That, and, and no, I, no I, gu- I guarantee you that over half of the people that do leave leave the state to go play sports, even yeah, will tell you I just wanted to see somewhere else. Yeah, I wanted to go somewhere. I wanted to be somewhere where I could be me and learn how to be me for the rest of my life as opposed to just because mom, mommy and daddy wanted me to stay close to home and grandma and grandpa wanted me to stay close to home and in the back of my mind it was a struggle but they end up saying i just had to go be me so, um and it's a, and that's a really valid point right no <laughs> i want to 
ask you, Travis, is it wrong? Would it be wrong of us, the old fogies that, that are looking ahead and remember what this is going to be like? Is it wrong of us to say, oh, I got you, I hear all of that, but you don't know what the legacy, what you could do to help us here at UT Austin. You think that's wrong of us to do that? I, you know, I mean, it's 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 worth making the it's make, worth making the argument, right? So that you can, if if you want, you know, that's certainly what uh, what Sark is telling the uh, uh, the young men that are that are thinking that, that that have Texas and Oklahoma and Alabama and Ohio State as their final four. Sark is is going up to uh, to Desoto. He's going up to DeSoto. He's going over to Lake Travis and Westlake, and he's telling those young people, you can be a hero in your own state mm-hmm. as opposed to being a hero somewhere else. And, um, and yeah, those are valid arguments. Um, some people just, you know, they just want to get away. Um, so uh, I didn't. I, I, but, you know, then again, I grew up a Texas fan. Mm-hmm. And as long as I was going to get, and I didn't play here, right? I, I didn't play anything. Mm-hmm. But as long as I could get into the University of Texas, I was going to the University of Texas. Oh, um, mm-hmm. that that just reps what I was going to do. I, um, but that, other than that, if you don't have that kind of connection to something, yeah, um, and if you don't grow up, say. You know, grow up going to DeSoto, but you grew up an A&M fan or a Longhorn fan or an SMU or TCU fan. If you don't really have that connection, then you're wide open. So, you know, if 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 in your heart you you just say, "Man, I've lived in Texas all my life. All my family's lived in Texas all their life. We don't go out of state to visit anybody. <laughs> I want to see something else for a change." That's that's sometimes that's what it is. Yeah, so. I mean, imagine the recruit just going to the campus of Miami, like. Oh yeah. After living in Texas your whole life, and yeah. you get to see some palm trees or something. Yeah. It's a different vibe. Yeah. Okay, so then Jamal, you just recently went to college athlete. Right. Could you have been swayed, do you think, to go one way or the other based off of a visit? Or you think we could have pulled you out of Texas and sent you to, like, so Connecticut? So, for <laughs> those, those, those listening, so you ran at Abilene Christian. No way, you just um, went to Connecticut. So, if, if at, at uh, the the schools that we were recruiting you and going to Abilene Christian, um, I'm certain that McNeese or Louisiana Tech or um, a number of schools outside the state of Texas would have loved to have had you. Absolutely, the number one goal was to try and run somewhere in Texas. There you go. That way, you know, when it came to meets, my family could always come and watch me. That's run, right. You know. Yeah. But same time. As a uh, college recruit, it's all about which school gives you the best offer. Yeah, that's you right. Know? So I could have easily been persuaded, and I feel like anybody out there can easily be persuaded to go um, compete somewhere outside of Texas. But for me, I was the main goal was to try and stay in Texas. You know? hmm. Very valid. Very valid. Just curious. One other, um, one other thing, and Douglas. Yeah. You you may you may take to this right away. Oh. Out of everybody here, Corey Corey may Corey may as well. But uh, I know that, that you go watch these games on a regular basis. Uh-huh. So I got one name for you. He's had a great week this week. Logan Stankoven. Oh, yeah. <laughs> three, three, three goals in four games with the Dallas Stars after being called up um, after the injury to um, uh, uh, Sagan. Okay. Um, and uh, he and um, Johnston are—they are killing it together on that on that line for uh, the Dallas Stars. So I'm I'm kind of curious. Do you guys think that when someone's on a heater like that, does it start to to affect the the line changes and playing time? Just because. That's a lot of goals, as you know, in a, in a sport where every goal is, is important. Do you think that starts to creep in and change strategy of lineups? Because, I mean, he just got there. <clears throat> or could it, could it affect the team as a, dude, you just got here. Yeah. And do, do you think that that would creep in and you would start to, to see, could it erode the team? Or do you guys think people would just be happy with the results? I, so I, I think Pete, and Pete DeBoer talked about it last night in his post-game press conference. Oh. Uh, because so Wyatt Johnston and Logan Stankoven, who are on this line together, I think that's, they're, they're on the third line for the Stars right now. Yeah, um, they they were in the same draft class. 
both drafted by the Dallas Stars. Um, they they both play for Team Canada. They're roommates when they go play for Team Canada. Oh. So they know each other very well. They they came through the minor league system together. Wyatt Johnston was pulled up last year, and now Stan Coven's getting his shot this year. Mm-hmm. Um, I think Pete DeBoer didn't say it in as many words, but the way if you extrapolate what he was talking about last night, you can tell he's going to let this heat ride. Okay. Like he's just going to he's going to put Wyatt Johnston and Logan Stan Coven on the ice together, and he's just going to let let whatever happens happens. If they go in a dry spell. You'll, you'll react to that. Yeah. But right now, oh. three goals in four games. Write it. Um, just write it. Just write, let it let it go. Look at Stan Kovac's 5'8", but he doesn't play 5'8". Mm-hmm. That guy is quick as lightning. And I think last night, um, I, I think the uh, they were playing uh, the loser peg. I mean, <laughs> the Winnipeg <laughs> Jets. Uh, um, I think uh, Winnipeg was a little shocked at how sturdy of a 5'8", he is. Mm. Uh, because he got pinned down in the corner a couple times, and he came out with the puck. Um, and you don't see that very often from a, from a small guy. 512-836-2887. You know we have a lot of people that have just moved here. So if you're a Winnipeg <laughs> fan, <laughs> call in with your drama, that anger that you have. I haven't heard that in a long time. I used to hear that a lot when I lived in Boston, Corey. No, we're it's not a big, It's a big hockey town. We were claiming Miami last week. <laughs> <laughs> that was Atlanta. Atlanta. It, was, it was Atlanta. Either right. way, it ain't Boston. You got to blame my mama. Now, now, now Boston was, a, was an adult that decision i i moved there as an adult but yeah blame my mama for all the places i lived as a kid that's crazy and then, and then you can blame uncle sam i was i was a military brat but uh yeah that's a, that's so awesome and you got some what when, when did all this come to you you got some these are some great observations i was sitting there watching that stars game last night and i said i i know we don't ho- talk hockey very often yeah um but I, I had I had to talk about Stan Coven because I was very impressed. Stars get up three zero last night in the first period. Mm-hmm. Um, hang on for a four to one win. Got an empty letter, netter late um, uh, by Rupe Hints, which I so, always love. Yeah, yeah, uh, and I just don't think you can change the lines. Or, and I know you mentioned you, you asked a question of yeah. like, do you consider maybe moving him to a different line? Yeah, or, I just think when you have a guy like that who's in the position that he's in, that he knows it's he's filling in for a superstar you know one of the main guys in the franchise of Tyler Sagan yeah and so you can't start making him a focal point in my mind oh. and you can't move him up the line because you know it's temporary okay. because then once Sagan gets back you're not gonna not get Sagan back it's right. like Sagan's gonna be starting once he gets back so right. I think that's the kind of predicament that He's in right now. Yeah. But that's why you got to enjoy the ride. Yeah, exactly. St- Stan Coven's going to hit a wall at some point. Um, and, and, and when Sagan gets back, Stan Coven probably comes back to Cedar Park. Wait a minute. Why does he have to hit it? Y'all, y'all lived. Well, maybe not you, Jamal. Y'all lived through Lynn Sanity. That was like a 28 game stretch. We could right. we take this to the playoffs. I mean, yeah, like a Corey, month and you don't a half, think bro. this could be? You've seen, you've lived through it, Lynn Sanity. That's it was all like I'm saying. A month and a half. What? It felt like forever, but it if did. you really, if you really think about it, it was like a month and a half. Playoff. This is the time to get hot. Playoffs. <laughs> 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 this is it. So, so I just want to argue that I, why does it have to end? Yeah, I think that's you can keep him on the right. roster. You would definitely keep him on the roster once playoffs come around. Okay. I think that's something that you definitely want to see. I mean, you saw that last year during the playoff run that they moved up a couple guys yeah, from yeah, the Texas yeah, Stars yeah. Um, and kept them up there. And then well, Wyatt unfor- Johnson was one of them they brought up last year. Yeah. Unfortunately, it did hurt the Texas Stars because they were also on the playoff <laughs> run <laughs> exactly. trying to win a chip. Uh, but, you know, that's, that's the way the cookie crumbles at times. That's right. But I think with him showing – what he has right now and making the most of his opportunity, I think that's going to put him in a position to stay with the Dallas Stars once playoffs come around. Where I'm from, I'm already a fan of Stank Oven. Put mm-hmm. some stank on it. That's right. He <laughs> scores! He just put some stank on it. Like, I, oh, I love it. Stank Oven? Man, this is, built for, this is built for it. I love it. Dallas Stars did make a move this week as well to shore up their defense. They have been really banged up on the defensive side. Um, but Chris Tanev, um, 
who uh, has 177 blocks this year as a defenseman, um, and I think he's second in the league in blocks. I was about to say that's uh, not a lot, is it? <laughs> so he will be uh, he will be joining probably this weekend. He'll be joining. He's got a, he's uh, he was playing for Calgary, yeah. um, and so he's got to go through the visa system. I think to to to. I don't. I. I don't. I'm not gonna pretend to understand the the semantics of changing from a Canadian to an American team. Uh, but evidently, the way they were talking last night, you have to go through some uh, clearances with each government uh, to to make that. I don't know whether it's because he's gonna have to get an apartment here, and so they call it a oh. a, a move. And so I I don't know what it, what all that encompasses. But um, but but uh, Dallas um, might. You know, this might be their only major move. Um, this shores up a defense that right now is a little banged up. Um, Stan Coburn's given the offense, which is a little banged up, a little boost. There's still 20 games left in the regular season. That went over Winnipeg last night. Um, Winnipeg, they, they've got three games on Winnipeg, but that gave them, they were both tied at 79 points yesterday. Mm-hmm. Uh, so now Dallas is in the lead uh, in their conference. So um, setting themselves up for a possible deep playoff run this year. And playoff hockey. I tell you what, I... I I, I sit here. I'm talking about hockey like I know hockey. I don't know hockey. Well, it's fun to watch, but I but playoff hockey is a lot of fun it's to electric. watch. It yes. is. I mean, you're getting to that point of season though where we're seeing playoff hockey we are. in the regular season. I mean, I don't know. Y'all seen the Boston Bruins lately? Have you seen what's been going on over there? Yes. I mean, since you're from Boston, I would hope you would. <laughs> oh, it's in my feed. Whether about. I want it to be in my feed or not. But they oh. had six straight games. Mm-hmm. Going to shoot out or over uh-huh. that is like that. Was, if I'm a Bruins fan, <laughs> oh man, I gotta check my heart. <laughs> exactly, cardiac kids. <laughs> my goodness, six straight games. They want to keep both goalies. Overtime or shootout. And they just beat Las Vegas, who honestly was my pick to win the Stanley Cup. We'll see what happens. Year. The trade, the trade, the Bruins trade deadline's looking. coming. Mm-hmm. I, I think, I think, I think someone may make a move on the Bruins. <laughs> They want to keep those goalies. I just, I don't know if, if enough people, or sorry, if they're going to get swayed. So some teams have called on Linus Ulmark, and um, that's, I mean, that's a possibility. So yeah. we, we get him out of here. Did, whoa, 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 hold on. That was, that was Corey for those, <laughs> those listening up in Beantown. Uh, yeah, that was Corey. That was Corey Morris, please. <laughs> Make sure you divert all that to him. Look, we're just, we're just. Houston will draft them in an expansion draft once we get an NHL team. Okay. There you oh, you think that'll happen? It's, there's movement happening right now. I actually saw a couple of stories on the news station down in Houston. They had like a hockey day, um, and a bunch of hockey fans came out. About, I think they said over 2,500 in jerseys. And um, at the the people that were over the Houston Arrows mm-hmm. back in the day, they're trying to get back into the game. Um, and reinvest uh, with Fertitta. I was about to say, you know if saying? they get Fertitta involved, I get Fertitta that's, involved. That's, that's how you make get stuff happen. Money, you know, yeah. and then that's their plan right now. They, they really do think Houston can be a hockey city. And, uh, I mean, Luke Dallas supports the Stars very well. Yeah. Um, uh, with, with, with the Cedar Park franchise for the Texas Stars, um, you know, it's, it, uh, well, it, you know, Jeremy Robertson, who plays for the Stars and is from Plano, um, and came out of the junior hockey system uh, th- there in North Texas. Talks all the time about how happy he is to be able to play in Dallas and just how proud he is that the support that um, Stars fans have given the Dallas Stars over the years, even in years where they've struggled, um, they still pack the place. Um, and and, um, and it's really turned it into a really good hockey environment. Uh, I don't see any reason why Houston couldn't do that as well. I, I believe third largest city in America, there's enough transplants. I think there's enough people that yes. have moved there from other places, those mm-hmm. colder climates. And that's what helps, and right? I think, I, I think so. Yeah. I, we, it's, the, it's the warmest city outside of Los Angeles. Mm-hmm. It's the warmest city, at least, I'll say this, it's the warmest city in the south. And so it it will, it will be a test case because mm-hmm. uh, I don't know if I don't know if we're ever really going to see Miami take off and and have that opportunity. It's a smaller much smaller city anyway. But I, mean, I think, still got I, think Florida over there, though. I mean Florida Panthers. I mean they're top of the division right now. Tampa Bay Lightning. That's that's over. Uh, 
the the Panthers. No, they they play. Uh, yeah, what city Orlando. is that? That's, that, that is Orlando. Yeah, Tampa Bay Lightning. Or, and right. then their temp, so that's Central Florida, but mm. all the way down south. Still hot though, right? They they barely show up at the baseball games you over there about, in, in Miami. About Tampa. Or? Yeah, oh, Miami. Oh, so Miami. Miami. That's yeah. they, I'm making fun of them. They're not good though. Marlins yeah. are good. So, <laughs> they had I mean, a runner too. I mean, yeah. So we got um, we got we we have some opportunities. I really think it could be a good town. I'm rooting for you, Corey. I hope your hometown gets it. Right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna close. I'm gonna close up the bag of stuff that I brought in. I'm gonna go ahead and set that that's hot behind yeah. me now. So now we can we can actually start talking about people's stuff. Want to hear us talk about? Sorry, sorry, I derailed the show there, but I just had right. to get those. I had to get those notes out every once in a while. No, you got us going. I, so, uh, but we'll be right back here after these words. K A Z I eighty eight point seven. We are back on the fans view. K A Z I eighty eight point seven. Travis Kent. Alongside Jamal January, looking across at Douglas Washington on my right, KB 24s Corey Mose, and during the break we got a caller, so we're gonna jump right into the phones. Caller, you there? You there, caller? I hear, Hello? I hear you there, Mr. Oklahoma. Hello, yeah. Mr. Oklahoma, you there? All right, we got you. Yeah, hey, can I talk about some basketball? You can talk basketball. Yes, you may. <laughs> yeah, you know, man, you know, my, my Cougars, they number one, but <laughs> I think, man, everybody going to be shooting at us, man, and knock them off because they number one. You, know? <laughs> you sound scared. You sound scared. So, um, so well, you, know, you know, I'm not really scared, man. I'm just kind of nervous because I know it always happens, you know. And, uh, so the Cougars have um, the Cougars have been pretty healthy this year. Um, the, we we don't they have the, they have what I think most people would agree is the shortest bench of all the major contenders, <laughs> right? I mean, really, they're playing eight guys a night. That's really about it. Um, that that give them significant minutes. Um, any fear that come tournament time. That fatigue factor sets in, or we just say, "No, these are eighteen to twenty-one year olds. They don't get tired." <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it's the latter. Yeah, but you know, I'm, I'm gonna tell you, man. I I really think you know the Cougars is not my team. I, I love the Cougars, but yeah. I'm kind of nervous they're gonna get knocked out. But I say UConn is really number one. <gasps> yeah, it's you know UConn. Um, so, first of all, it's tough to go against the defending champion, right? Um, uh, yeah, it's a different team. It is a different team. Um, but uh, the, 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 I think they have built – UConn was a great program under Calhoun. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and, and, it, and it tailed off for a few years. Um, but the retooling of that program back into a national title contender um, has – Kevin Ollie – has done a fantastic job Crazy. with that program. Yeah. He's recruited yeah. well. He coaches well. Um, we, we never know when, when these guys come out of a program and they go through their playing career and they get into coaching and they're a bench coach for a while and then they take over a program, even a program that they played at. Man, it, it's sketchy, right? We, we saw North Carolina try this with a number of people. Um, and it doesn't, it doesn't always work out. Uh, but Kevin Ollie doing a really really great job at Connecticut uh, it so Dan Hurley is the head coach right now for UConn I'm sorry um, I'm sorry but yeah. Kevin I'm well, sorry. When the, when I apologize <laughs> <laughs> I apologize do you're right I forgot Kevin, Kevin, Kevin Ali. he's at Brooklyn right now yes that's right he, that's I apologize <laughs> so Mr. Oklahoma what, what I'm what Kevin Ali followed Calhoun though yes, right yeah. okay that's what yeah, yeah. that's what threw me off those are hard are you worried because of the loss that UConn had to Creighton, is that is that what you're worried about? Because they lost to UConn earlier. Y'all remember they, they lost to UConn early in the year too. Uh, some people just yeah. have your number. I yeah. mean, they, they say styles make fights. Um, so why I I am I am not I am not ranking UConn as high as Houston. I am still in favor of Houston being number one with the short bench, mm-hmm. um, but. Yeah, UConn. As long as UConn doesn't face Creighton in the tournament, I think I think we'll have a we, we may have some chalk. 
Yeah, I, I, I think, think they, they needed that loss too, though. I mean, like I said last week or two weeks ago, every team needs that loss. Yeah. Like if you go into a tournament like Gonzaga, thirty-eight no, you know, thirty yeah. no, it's just never a good recipe for success. I mean, look at Arizona back in the day when they had DeAndre Aiden. You remember that team? Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Number yeah. one overall team in the tournament got bounced in the first round. Yes. You know, and it's just like. Yeah. They didn't face any competition all year, and well, they ne- they didn't face adversity mm-hmm. all year. They won all their games, and so I think adversity does bring out the best in a lot of these teams. And so, yeah, I, I think UConn definitely will be one of the teams in the Final Four, at least Elite, elite Eight. But I'm I'm on the same wavelength. Though. I'm not going to say they're the best team right now. I, I think U of H is up there. Um, I think Purdue's on a different level. Uh, I, I think Arizona's yeah. on a different level. And yeah. uh, watch out for Kentucky. Watch out for Kentucky. Tennessee's cool, but they don't play defense in Tennessee. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Kentucky don't play defense either, but they just got more dudes that can put the ball in the basket. Tennessee's giving up like 56 points a game. <laughs> yeah. And I'm shocked that you're a fan of Kentucky. They've taken they've taken almost double digit losses already. I, mean, I know, but look at look at recently though. The recent Kentucky team, and this has happened with all the Kentucky teams. They you look back, like, all, the, all the blue chippers got all the blue league. chippers have to figure it out. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we're being honest. Okay. Like every year, this is the time of year Kentucky starts figuring stuff out. You know, it's like okay, yeah. we've had months to be playing with each other now. Of course, it looks kind of shaky at the beginning, but they've had some big time wins. I mean, their last win with Reed Shepard going off for over thirty points. Um, there's a guy off the bench, Rob Dillingham. He's nasty. It gives me like Devin Booker vibes, and Devin Booker was at Kentucky, yeah. coming off the bench. I was I was gonna say firepower. The, oh, the what I have noticed about <coughs> they they are lighting up with NBA scores. That Kentucky mm-hmm. squad, yeah. they put 117 on Alabama. I didn't hear no roll yeah. tie from my friends there Mm-mm. on that, and that's number 13 ranked mm-hmm. Alabama. Uh, they did put up a, over 100 points in a loss earlier. Um, uh, sorry, the 92. They lost to Tennessee, number five Tennessee, because you, you mentioned Tennessee too. Mm-hmm. But Tennessee put 103, but it was 103-92. They beat Vanderbilt, eh, but, you know, they put 109 on them. Yeah. So I like that firepower that they have in Kentucky. Yeah, but so I'll only, give you that. The only problem is, you know, and this is why I'm not putting Kentucky in the same level as U, U of H or UConn or um, Purdue, is that you got to play defense. You know, because at a certain point in the tournament, you can't be hot for six straight. Like, it's just not logically possible to think that you can be hot for six games straight. And that's what Kentucky's been doing. They've just yeah. been outscoring people. Yeah. And at a certain point, you got to lie down and get stops. That's something UH does very well. Mm-hmm. Same thing with Purdue. Mr. Oklahoma, what else you got for us? Yeah, man, on that, on, I watched that Laker game the other night. You know, uh-huh. the Lakers looking good. The Lakers, you know, the Lakers looking good. But in the seventh game series, I don't think they're going to hold out, man. Yeah, I can't, I can't wait to see them in Golden State playing a play, play-in game. Yeah, that's going to be electric, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Two teams and neither one of them going to win a series. Yeah. No, you're tripping, though. I'll give the Lakers the first round. Oh. I'm pointing out, if the Lakers go up against one of these young teams, mm-hmm. like – First seed Timberwolves, second yeah. seed OKC. If they play a team like oh. that, I could see them definitely upsetting in the first well, round. It all depends on what they're going to get out of Anthony Davis. He dropped forty last night. He's been he hooping this year. That guy last night. He's been he does this that. Yeah, we we should be worried. He's playing like he's in a contract year. Yeah, <laughs> crazy. Crazy that he's kind of healthy. He's been crazy he's been relatively way. healthy, and it's what everybody. It's not because AD and LeBron are gonna show up in the playoffs. Like they always show up. Yeah. The problem is is this is the role, the role support, the help support. I mean, look, I see why Dallas fans wanted Spencer Dinwiddie out of Dallas. Oh my goodness. Yeah. I mean, that dude is just bricking yeah. every time he shoots mm-hmm. the ball, and you're supposed to be a shooter. You know, they went out and got him. What is what? Is, so that's what we're going to say. He's a shooter because I was going to say, is he just a good locker room guy? Travis, do you remember any specifics about well, Yeah, well, he's, 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 not, he's not a 3 and D guy. I mean, certainly he's not that. Um, but his length um, is supposed to give you something on the defensive end of the court. Okay. But he's, he's not afraid to hold the ball or shoot the ball. And so when you bring in a piece that you're hoping gives you some length and defense, but now he's taken up 12 to 15 shots a game. Yeah. That, that, that doesn't work out. I mean, it just – there'll be a game or two here and there where he'll get hot. But 
other than that, um, I, you know, when we was, you know, it was like, dude, give the ball back to Luca. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he, has, he has a six-five point guard. Good, good job, Travis. I finally had to look it up. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's I will that's say this though, with the Lakers' support, I mean, D'Angelo Russell heard the trade rumors, and props to him. He, he started balling out. <laughs> he started he's been balling back. out. Every year he's been back. It's been trade rumors. Trade they, rumors. They got man. back from winning the the, the mid season tournament, and it was already like, okay, so what can we get yep. for, for for Zach for Levine? Game? Levine was always the the trade target, uh, but I mean, he had a big time shot against the Clippers to give him that uh, the win. Big time, like, and it was one of those catch and shoot situations where he caught it and, sh- and shot it in less than a second. Yeah, okay, it was crazy. So, Mr. Oklahoma, yes, sir. What do you think about that guy being that third wheel? Then, do you think that he could? This could be the year because he's making seventeen million a year. So, aside from LeBron, aside from AD, do you think he's finally going to serve uh, earn that money in the playoffs? Well, what, what, what's his name again? D'Angelo Russell. Because cause you, you brought up the, the Lakers, so I just thought uh, I could get yeah. your, your opinion on if he's going to be that third wheel in the playoffs for them. Well, I, I can't really make a comment on that, man, because I just really watched the Lakers be LeBron and, and, and uh, what's, the, what's the milk man name? Uh, the, 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 the tall man, the uh, man. Anthony, Anthony Davis. Davis. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, but I can't make a comment, but what I want to say, man, there's some teams, dog. I don't, uh, first of all, I don't even watch the Rockets. Oh. It's a basic fact. You know, you know what I mean? Let me finish. I mean, they rebuilt it. Yeah, yeah let, me, let me finish. Mm-hmm. Man, the Rockets win one game, they lose three and four, win another game, lose four, five, and six. Win one game and just steady keep playing. They're not consistent. I don't know what's wrong with Rocky. I do not watch Oklahoma men basketball. <laughs> I don't even like their coach, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know, name but I'm going to say that I, yeah, I'm like. that I do watch. I watch South Carolina women. Them girls is yeah. bad, bro. Yeah. Hey, Mr. Oklahoma, <laughs> hey, <laughs> Mr. Oklahoma, I know, I know it's, early, it's early in the season, um, but I don't know if you got a chance to watch any, because I too, uh, let me give props to ESPN, um, the women's softball coverage uh, early in the oh, yeah. season, there have been a lot of marquee matchups um, between ESPN and the Longhorn Network, <laughs> we're seeing a bunch of great matchups, and yeah. Oklahoma and Texas are sitting at one and two in the country right yeah. now. Yeah. Um, this Texas team, oh, I, look, I Oklahoma, beef, go, huh? I got beef though. They didn't air Texas State versus Texas. Oh yeah. No, yeah, you're right. They wouldn't air it anywhere. Yeah. I had to go. Yeah. Couldn't wear no what, highlights. What happened there? <laughs> how? How are I don't we know not how. I don't know how that didn't. That was a one zero game, right? ESPN Plus, like yeah. we're not, we're not, we're not one there either. We're the tenth largest yeah, city in America. A one zero game. And they, <laughs> yeah. Oh, and, maybe they knew. <laughs> Hey, but Tegan Kavon, uh, freshman pitcher for Texas, man, she went out there and pitched, shut out, I think seven strikeouts mm-hmm. on her birthday. Oh, yeah. Didn't know that. Yeah, crazy, right? What a, yeah. what a present to yourself. Yeah. <laughs> but not televised. No. Don't make no sense. But you're right, though. They have been doing it a lot better with college yeah. softball. Mr. Oklahoma, before you go, though, I just want you, I just want to know, Oklahoma just beat Texas 71-70. to How are you not leading with that? Aren't you supposed yeah, to be getting Travis that, mad here? You're supposed to be bumping your chest. Because he knows that wasn't a trial. He knows that wasn't a trial. <laughs> <laughs> I was yeah, right. But, yeah, but you know what, man? Are you talking about the women? Yes, yeah. yes sir. Yeah, but man, you know, that, you know, I wasn't there at the deal when that call was made, but, <laughs> but you know, hey. Are you laughing? But you'll, you'll, take that call, you'll take it. it. You know? You'll take it. I take it. Uh, you know, the women, I'm going to watch. I'm glad for them, but. But the men, man, they are so pitiful, you know. And I just, wow, what's the use of watching them? Uh, Miss Oklahoma, I, I just want to go back to that. Oklahoma is 15-2 and two in the Big 12. They have a better record, even though they're ranked lower than Texas. They have a better record in the Big 12. Uh, you're talking about the men or the women? women. Sorry, I'm the back women. to the women. I'm back to the women. So okay. They're 15-2 and two in the Big 12. Number one seed in the Big 12 tournament. I mean, come on. You... This is your time. This is your moment. I'm yeah, going to lean into this. Yeah, but, you know, 
things happen, man. People get upset. Okay. You wait for the you make you wait for the the, the match for the march. You wait for this month when the tournament starts. Okay. Yeah. All right. It's like I was bringing. It's like I was bringing back to Houston. Man, I want to see Houston in the championship and win it all for the men. Yeah. We waiting on that. Yep. The, the women, you know, they're doing good in Oklahoma, man, but big things happen. You can lose on the free throw line yeah. by one point. Yep. You know. Yeah. But I want to see the champ. I'm waiting for the championship. I'm a championship man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> all right. That's all. Even, even, even the cow. Even the cow man. Nah, that sounds like a fair no, enough thing to me. But okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I won't root for you until you make it to the championship. That's that, crazy, just in case you know what you sound like. Yeah. But you know, I want to see the I want I want to see the Houston Texans in the championship and win it. I want to see the Cowboys in the championship and win it. That's just what I'm at. Yep. I'm happy because Houston Cougars is number one. But you know, Morris Madness, man, you get knocked off. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Every yeah. year. I'm not gonna break. Hey man, I'm gonna talk to you guys. I'm gonna talk to you guys later. I'll see y'all next. All right, Mister Coleman, we appreciate it as always. Thank you, sir. I hate to break it to him, but UH not winning the championship. Nah. You wanna know why? Mattress Mac placed a bet on him. <laughs> oh. Two million dollars. Come on, Mac. Nah. <laughs> hey, Mac bet on the Rangers last year too. Did he really? Oh. He also bet on the Astros though. Yes, he's a, <laughs> oh, believe me. If it's a if, it, if it's a Texas based team, yeah. yeah. Of course he, he of course he played at UT. Oh. Um What position? Uh, Do you know what position? I think he was a defensive back. Really? I'm not. I'm not 100 percent sure. I know he got. He's toasted. nationally known, <laughs> but like <laughs> I remember living in other places and hearing about that guy. Mm-hmm. So that's pretty awesome. I remember. I mean, grew up watching commercials with that guy. Oh yeah. I mean, it's like I mean, he's been old my whole life. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So, uh, while we were since we were talking uh, NBA, he took us there, guys. Mm-hmm. Wimbyama versus Chet Holmgren. Yeah. Rookie of the year, I think, has been decided. I think it has, too. For those who don't know, the Spurs played the Oklahoma City Thunder, which is a it's, – it's almost like a reverse of the records. Uh, Oklahoma City has got 41 wins on the season. Spurs have 48 losses on the season. This should have been a one-sided event. But uh, 132 to 118, the Spurs get that win. Jamal, I'm, I'm going to say since you're closest to these guys as the ages, <laughs> uh, Shea Gilgis Alexander, I mean, what, what is he your generation's Mamba mentality? Is he, is he that face for your generation? I mean, nah, not really. No. Um. If you really want to dive deep into the mom mentality piece, you can really talk about the players that keep comparing themselves to Kobe Bryant, which are D Book and Jason Tatum. Yes, but yes. SGA still is an overall like good ball player. Don't yeah. get me wrong. Okay. Hey, look, look let's, let's talk frankly though. As, as, as part of SGA's problems is he's playing for Oklahoma City. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 you know, when it was Westbrook, Harden, and Durant, th- that was the height of the coverage that Oklahoma City was going to get. Oh. And I, I feel. I feel I, I don't feel you know. Look, um, Holmgren has has made the transition into pro ball. I think even better than some of him, even his supporters thought. Um, I kind of feel bad for him that he has to be a rookie in the same year with women. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it's just that's just it's just a mismatch. Yeah, he should have uh, got hurt last year. Though. Yeah, but 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 then again, in he's in Oklahoma City and Wimby's at San Antonio. You know, trying to get to double digit wins. Um, and so I don't, from that standpoint, I don't feel bad for him. Um, but 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 their biggest problem right now is that they're Oklahoma City. Yeah. Um, and, and they're just not going to get the coverage. And 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 exactly what Corey was talking about earlier of if 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 Golden State or Los Angeles are the eight seed or the seven seed oh. and they're going to they're, they're playing a seven game series against Oklahoma City. Yeah. Um, that's a tough matchup. It's a tough it, matchup. It's, it, it, is, it just is. And um, I, whose roster is the better roster? Oklahoma City, I think, right now is the better roster. Yeah. But when it comes to pressure games, yes. who are the best pressure players on the court? 
Golden State and Los Angeles are going to have the best pressure players yeah. on the court. So that, it's 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 not going to be easy for them. Do you guys think? Uh, just I want to do a little conspiracy theory. Do you think Minnesota or Minnesota right now, listeners, is number one in the West Crazy. at forty-two and seventeen, and one game behind them is the aforementioned Oklahoma City Thunder. So because of that, do you think going down a stretch, you don't want to be that one seed, especially if you got to play the Lakers? Do you think maybe we might uh, rest a player or two nah. so that we give up the number one seed? No, nah, anytime any team you place in the West is going to be. Phenomenal. Yeah. Like there's not there's not a there's not a team that you that you tank for. You know what I'm saying in that conference because every single team, no matter who you match up against, there's going to be pros and cons. I mean, I think the seventh seed is what like Dallas right yeah. now. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And then the Kings are right behind. That's what I'm saying yeah. like you know, <laughs> any any matchup <laughs> is going to be tough. So now you you try to get home court advantage. Like that's that's what you should be doing in the West is try your best to get home court advantage because you don't know how many series are going to go to Game Seven. You know, and you want to be at home for those for those games. Yeah, you want to you want to be at home facing. Kyrie and Luca together. I mean, yeah. there, there's nights. There's nights when Dallas looks, still looks dysfunctional. Um, but with Gafford added to the roster, um, it, you know, like they got more broken noses right now yeah. than anybody in the NBA. Thing. I think Lively's <laughs> nose. Well, he's playing again. He is. He had he's, five blocks the other night. He did. I was impressed. Um, but but they're, if they're healthy at the end of the year, yeah. And and you gotta you gotta play them and I. <laughs> I mean, they can every matchup is yeah, ridiculous. It is. Yeah. It yeah. is. But I will say with OKC, like, yes, I mentioned the Lakers could could take them out in the first round, but I, I don't want to go on record and saying I think we're watching the beginning of a dynasty. I really do think that mm-hmm. OKC is going to become one of those teams in the next two or three years that they're going to be at the top of the Western Conference every single year. They have a lot of young dudes, Sam Presti, and like we mentioned last week, mm-hmm. with Brandon Harris, you know, coming from the G League, knows what the heck he's doing, and he's built a juggernaut, and he still has picks mm-hmm. in the vault. He still a has lot. cap space. I like, I, I want to strengthen the argument that you made, uh, Travis, Three of the best home win percentage teams in the NBA mm-hmm. are all in the West. Mm-hmm. Minnesota Timberwolves, Oklahoma City Thunder, Denver Nuggets. Mm-hmm. So you are spot on, sir. Y- you want that. And yeah. to your point, you're not going to tank. So, again, you could have game seven in your home. So, Corey, you are correct there. Uh, there's there's just such a difference when you look at the home records of the top teams in the East versus in the West. So the Western teams, I guess we're going to see. Yeah, that, I mean, the Western Conference is exciting. It is. Like, it, is. It, it is so crazy to me to see the, the, the parity between Western and Eastern Conference. Because mm-hmm. Eastern, like, it's Boston. Mm-hmm. Like, Boston's the team. There's no team that I even think is remotely close to Boston. Eight games back. And Cleveland Cavaliers. Eight, and that's a young team, as we all know. Yeah, I mean, young. Spider Mitchell has the veteran presence, but yeah. very young team, so they may even fold. And that's, and that's based off record, right? Yes. Right? Like, I, I'm doing based off my eyes. Like my, <laughs> my eyes tell me, like, yes. no one is yes. near Boston in the East, especially with Philly not having him be, and who knows how, how long it will take him to get back into shape yeah. once he does get back. If Boston doesn't make the finals, they need to blow that thing up. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, Who's going to take those contracts, though? Exactly. They put themselves in a predicament. Yes, they did. So they better win. <laughs> like, I think right now, they're, that front office is looking at that squad like, there's no reason this team should not be in the finals. 6.30 tonight on ESPN, Dallas at Boston. Ooh, that's that's going to be nice. Ooh. So, Look, Porzingis, I mean, he just seems like a Celtic, right? He kind of does. He just yeah. Yeah. he kind of does. It just feels like it fits perfectly. And they love him. And they my love feed him. is on fire yeah. from my Boston friends about Porzingis. Yeah, I mean, because I, I wanted to be negative because he didn't he, the health and mm-hmm. what he gave the Wizards. But no one wants to hear that. It's, no, how, it's how he's melding right now with that team. No franchise cheers for a white guy like Boston. <laughs> this is true. Man. Did I say that out loud? You can't. <laughs> you can't. Because the brothers that I know, they know back it. in Boston, they don't cheer for I bet they can't name a, a bunch of other white guys they want to, besides Luca. But uh, but they go on in for Krista, and they can spell it right, too. <laughs> He's just a perfect fit. Though. They don't even know where that brother from. <laughs> <was. laughs> they like Chris Stapp, Chris yeah, 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 yeah. That guy. Barber shops are fire for that yeah, guy. That guy, that guy. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> yeah, we we um we we have just a, a little bit of drama though, guys. Doc Rivers 
coach the All-Star game, even though he had just got to the Milwaukee Bucks. And when he came in, they looked really bad. But now they've won four in a row. And he brought in his his uh, he brought in the the problem child Patrick Beverly. If he turns it around and he gets that championship for the drama, fellas, I'm That's just kind of curious. Um, does does the old coach get a ring? I mean, what, do, we, <laughs> do we? You know, if, if, you, if like if if you if you start a, if you start a season somewhere and you get traded away, you're still on the roster. You should get a ring. Mm-hmm. That's that's the way it's that's the way it is in every sport. Mm-hmm. I, you know, I think, <laughs> I actually think he does. I think if they pull it off, yeah, I think he gets yeah. a ring. I don't see why not. Mm-hmm. Jamal? I mean, yeah. What, they <laughs> you guys go win a national championship for a track team. Corey gets hurt, doesn't finish the season. Your track is different, though, bro. <laughs> Your track is a little different. Track is a little different. Uh, yeah, you can wait, get a team title, though. You still a, get a team. You still, you still get a team the, title. Okay, yeah. all right. You still get the... You still I get the rock the ring. I, mm-hmm. I can make all my social media posts with I mean, the ring. Aren't you two women the two-time indoor defending national champions? They sure are. They sure are. I mean, I just throw that off the top of my head. <laughs> I did a lot. <laughs> At the end of this year, we need to we need to talk about how how many of these Big 12 championships are going to the SEC. Mm-hmm. It's 20 seconds. That's right. I mean... Yeah. Football, you t- basketball. UT Women's Tennis ranked number four in the country right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, softball. They took care of Auburn the other night. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Fighting 6 1. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. yeah I'm, I'm, I'm not spending too much time with Longhorn Network. <laughs> we'll be back after this. <laughs> we are back on the Fans View, KAZI 88.7. Travis Kent, alongside on my left, Jamal January. Across running the board and doing it well. Douglas Washington on my right. KVU 24 is Corey Mose. I got all the pressure. Jay Hunt texts me and he's like, hey man, make sure you do this. Make sure you do that. Okay. Okay. Big shoes to fill. <laughs> hey, Corey, we, 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 before we get into uh, um, some some other sports talk, um, I don't think we've ever talked about this on air. What's your, what's your regular TV schedule? Regular like like TV like, like, you, like you have regular um, sports shifts, right? So like you do... We, you do you do Saturdays and Sundays? Yeah, so what? not everything's flipped, though, because Jeff Jones, our spe- sports director, he's on paternity leave. Shout okay. out Jeff. He actually just had a kid. Hey, um, congratulations. So um, he's out for eight weeks. Okay. So um, now it's... So you're doing, you're doing Monday through Friday, well, 6, 8, and 10? Nah, or six I six? wish. Um, we're doing... So right now, I'm, it's looking like I'm Wednesday, Thursday, Sunday. Okay. From okay. the 6 o'clock show and the 10 o'clock show. So, okay. Mm-hmm. Well, Sundays, our show is not at 6, it's at 5.30. Okay. And ten. All right. But yeah, so six and ten. All right. I just I don't I just don't think we've ever talked about it on the air. I guess not. No. <laughs> okay. <that's it. laughs> I mean, we I in most of this KV twenty four is Corey Mose. Yeah. We hardly ever talk about. That's a good point. We're on the air work, and so I want to make sure we got that out there. I was just it, it off the top of my head. I was like, I don't think I know exactly. Like I've tuned in and watched you. Yeah. But I don't know that I know when to tune in and watch you necessarily. That's so. A good point. Yeah. So. Wednesday, Thursday, Sunday, right now. Um, Right. I'm just happy. 10. I'm just happy because when I tell people, I'm like, yeah, so, you know, the fans view on Friday, I, you know, it's kind of like, uh-huh. And then I say, Corey Mose from KD's on it. Yeah, okay. So, uh, what time is y'all on? I'm like, all right. Well, then I guess lying. I guess I should have led with that. Uh, maybe I could just remind you, you know me, but they're here for the most. Once they start hearing, I, I don't know nothing. <laughs> <laughs> you going to the movie you going to tomorrow? Man, am I gonna? I'm gonna live at the Moody tomorrow. Okay, man, back to back games. Yeah, I'm gonna probably get there around 11:30 noon. Probably won't leave there until about. So it's a one minute at one o'clock. Women at seven. six, seven, seven. Yeah, okay. senior night for women. Okay, so they're gonna celebrate Shaylee Gonzalez and Khadija Fai. Um, tough loss. I mean, and this game was supposed to be win and you get a share of the conference title so right. it's kind of a bummer that it, now th- I'm not going to say this game doesn't mean anything but right. it doesn't mean it, it, yeah. well, it, it does I mean they they do have to win it to clinch the second seed yeah but, but they still could get the second seed even if they dropped it I don't think they're going to drop this game. No, they're not. Uh, but uh, uh, it was disappointing uh, that Oklahoma Kings, they had like, what, an eight-point lead going into the fourth quarter? Something uh, like yeah, that. they got up by 15. They, exactly. They were in control of the game the, the whole, whole way. Game. The whole game. Um, and you just can't can't get a rebound. I mean, Oklahoma had felt like six possessions in the final minute. 
without UT touching the ball because it, of all the turnovers. It was because. the first and third quarter. First quarter they came out. UT women looked amazing. Yeah. Came back from the half. Looked amazing. I just the lull there. It was that going into the half, and then again to close out the game. They outscored seventeen to ten in the fourth quarter. Yeah, and I always say, it. and that's the thing with Oklahoma. Like props to them. They they didn't they didn't back off. Like they were getting down by double digits, and they responded every single time. And so that's one thing that OU that I wanted to give credit for is that like, like you mentioned at the end of the first half, they went on that I think ten to two run to then make it a one-point game at the half. You know, like, you can't end the half that way if you're already up by double digits. That's when you need to put your foot on their necks and go into the halftime up 20, you know. Instead, you let Oklahoma get back, get that momentum. And then, But the, the thing is, though, they came out in the second half, UT, and made the lead again. Yeah, you know, yeah. made it another 15-point <laughs> lead. And I'm like, yeah. okay, bet. Now they're going to close this game out. But same thing, Oklahoma responds, gets to the game again. And then I think... One thing I tweeted out during the game was, like, if you watch it, you know, Madison really started to force a little bit in that fourth quarter. Uh, you could tell that she wanted to ball in her hands, which I understand. But, like, her <coughs> shot was falling short. All of her shots were falling short. So, clearly, her legs were getting taken out of her. Um, and so, at that point, you got to relinquish the ball, mm -hmm. in my mind. Like, I understand who you are um, and who you're expected to be on the court, but you have a Shaylee Gonzalez on your team that has over 2,000 points for her career. You know, you have uh, Deanna Gaston, who's all Big 12. Like, use them. The last three minutes were not very pretty. Mm -mm. The um, tired legs, um, uh, forcing the ball into the lane when it was ill-advised. Um, I mean, look, we're... we're we're going to talk about the travel call for forever, Man. but um, but it, it, there there were a lot of things that led up to that point that Texas could have, could have taken control of to stem that tide that Oklahoma was bringing. But so so I, I'm a little I hear what you guys are saying, right? But Booker took 20 shots. Mm -hmm. She made eight. She had six steals, yeah. which is a big deal, and then she had like seven assists. No one else even went double digit for shots. So is it? Is, do we do we look to coaching? <coughs> and at some point, because she's not a guard, do we look at coaching? She's a guard. Are they saying? <laughs> she's a guard. Are they saying? Let her. Let her. Let her get. It all goes through her. Yeah. We could have changed up the game because <coughs> I I like what you're saying uh, about Gaston. I thought maybe Gaston, and then Booker also took 12 free throws, and and that helps. She made 10 of them. So I mean, that and helps. so that that should show you like. Well, she took 20 shots and took 12 free throws. Yeah. You know, those free throws, those shot attempts don't count towards. I know. So we're talking about extra six shots Yes. that she got fouled on. So we're talking 26 yes. jumpers. And so at a certain point, and I know Coach Schaefer, like he's asking them to drop the ball down low. Okay. Um, he's telling them attack the paint because they know they got size on every mm -hmm. team that they play yeah especially with Skylar Van the star player for Oklahoma she had five, four fouls mm -hmm. and so they were trying <coughs> to foul her out but also and, and late, call. she got two charges she yes and, and and late when it was going back and forth they were able to I think they got a put back uh, and then they, they might have dropped it down low one one other time um, and, you know because it was what it was uh, oh, Oklahoma no, Texas. Te yeah. te Texas finally did. And they got Taylor Jones. When he put but, Taylor Jones but, back in the game, yes. which I thought he should have did four minutes earlier, um, but I'm not the coach. So put Taylor Jones back, mm -hmm. and she gets that put back. Yes. But then I was going to say, when you mentioned uh, the stats, mm -hmm. I would want you to look up the free throws because, to me, it just felt like Texas was going one and two at the line, mm -hmm. one out of two they, for they, the last five minutes of the game. Oh, I don't have the last. I, well, the, overall, oh, they went 71%, 20 out of 28 is yeah. what they had. Well, and Madison was 10 out of 12. Yeah. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. she was. So and, I, and, I, I'm, I'm not good at math, but that, that leaves, you know. Yeah. The second best person was Jones. She went four out of six. And uh, that uh, Gaston did get – she took four, and she went three out of four. Mm. But aside from that, just ones, onesie and twosies. Y to your point, Moore went one for two. Gonzalez went one for two. Muhammad went one for two. So that's a lot of one for two. I mean, we're talking about a lot of missed opportunities yeah. at the mm -hmm. line. Yeah. You just need to make one of them. Try oh. game. And so that's, that's my – like, Texas played a flawless game except for the last minute. Yeah. And that's unfortunate, you know, and you lose a game that way. But that's the way the cookie crumbles. And like Mr. Oklahoma said, I mean, that's March. 
So, so you, you, you know this team a lot better than I do. I've, I've watched a number of games this year, um, and I watch them, and I'm, I, I try to, I'm trying to figure out. We, 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 last week we talked about Caitlin Clark, or it was a couple weeks ago actually, we talked about yeah. Caitlin Clark and that Iowa team, and um, what, what, what she's doing is fantastic. Um, they, they were in the Final Four last year, but Cor- Corey, Corey's point is, it's Caitlin either shooting or it's Caitlin driving, and she kicks it out to that one girl. Yeah. That's, that's their entire offense. And, and Corey, I think a lot of people wonder, can they get back to a Final Four with just essentially two players doing it? I watched this Texas team, and I'm not saying that it's Madison Booker or nothing, but she's dominating the number of shots. She's got the ball in her hand um, all the time. For, and, man, I wish we had Roy. If, mm-hmm. if, if Rory and Booker, um, I mean this this is a this is a easy top ten in the country basketball team yeah. right now. Yeah, it is a top four team in the country with Rory and Booker on the floor for sure. Um, what 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 do they need to add offensively to be a little more dynamic as they try to run through the Big Twelve tournament and then the NCAA tournament? I, I just think it's – I think they have all the pieces. Okay. Like, to this day, I would say, and I've been telling people this this week, ironically, that you asked me this, I think outside of South Carolina, they could be any team in the country. Mm-hmm. Like, I honestly, genuinely believe that. And the reason why is because, one, their size. They're the biggest team in the whole nation with Taylor Jones, mm-hmm. Leah Moore, Deanna Gaston. You throw in Khadija Fai in there. You throw in the length of Amina Muhammad on the wing, the length of Jack Alinga on the wing. Like, And then you got Madison Booker, who's six foot one, playing point. Mm-hmm. Like, You have size. Um, and you have the ability that this size isn't just size, but Taylor Jones can get buckets. She was averaging 17 points the last three games heading into the game against Oklahoma. Aaliyah Moore went on her little run for a couple games. She was averaging 16-9 and nine for a little bit. Mm-hmm. And so Deanna Gaston, like I said, all Big 12, first team. She can get the ball in the bucket. Uh, and she had a nice mid-range. And so you have bigs that can score. The problem is consistency of getting the ball to the bigs. Okay, that's- and that's what I feel like has been the downfall at points is that they, these guards, Shay Lee, Shay, Madison, they don't intentionally get the ball down low. Okay. And that's something Coach Schaefer does harp on a lot in okay. post game in the sense of, I wish we would have went down low more. I wish we would have had the ball go to the post more. You know, because that's what he wants. He, mm-hmm. wants. he wants a bruising, banging out type game because he knows he has the bodies to win that type of matchup. If it's up and down, if it's a running fast break type game like South Carolina loves to do, yes. they're cooked. You know, they don't have the, the the guard play to keep up. But if you slow the game down, play half court defense with those trees down low, that's how they're going to win in the tournament. T- Taylor Jones should catch 20 plus yes. low block yes. entry passes every game. Every game. Period. Five, f- she should get at least five a quarter low block entry passes. Mm-hmm. There's no... Re- I have... Um, I, I have seen less athletic big girls than her mm-hmm. dominate women's college basketball games. She is more athletic than, than many of them and has the size and the ability. There is no reason that she shouldn't be a focal point of you know, 40% of the offensive trips down, down the floor. She tied for the team high in blocks. She had three blocks, mm-hmm. and uh, Gaston had three blocks, too. Uh, I, I want she to was in position to for that rebound, by the way. I, oh. I did want to. I did want to say, like at the end of the game, the reason, to, and you know, I hate to put blame, but if you look at the tape, if you go back and look at that last second shot mm-hmm. from Oklahoma. Deanna Gaston has her face towards Taylor down low for that rebound. Taylor is in perfect position to grab the board with two hands, but Deanna doesn't realize when she goes up to get the rebound, she's fighting her own teammate for the rebound. Pokes the ball away. Mm. And then OU recovers and gets a board. And so, like, Taylor's in position to get that winning rebound. Um, it's just unfortunate that. And that was the second offensive rebound of that of that, that, possession. Of that possession, yeah, too. Yeah, exactly. Um, and so, I, I just, the game was right there. Yeah. The game was right it was. there. And it, it, it is so disappointing. Our, I just want to play devil's advocate just for a quick second. Mm-hmm. Maddie Booker is a freshman. 
Are we yeah. expecting too much out of a freshman at this point? Um, because think about, I just want to offer you guys two things. Well, so what Lauren are we had five fouls. That's my question. And then what are we expecting? Holly had four fouls. Uh-huh. So, again, when 40 minutes on the floor, we're depending on the freshman to run it. Aside from Juju right. over at USC, d- d- does this happen that often? It, A number three ranked team. No, it, 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 it doesn't happen that often, especially on, on in the women's game. I don't, feel, I don't feel like it happens as often in the women's game as we see it happen in the men's game. That being said, um, it, wasn't, it wasn't fair to Maddie that Rory went out and she had to take over early in the season. We're at the point of the season now where she's not a freshman anymore. Yeah, yeah, we're past that phase. She she got about ten games to be a freshman, and past those ten games, she she's a sophomore to me now. You know, she's she she's over her freshman her freshman uh, year. So and she's playing like it, like she's getting all the more the notoriety. She's getting all the awards. I mean, she is playing like a sophomore. You know, look, I. I, I I, I mentioned there, there were a couple possessions where I felt that she kind of went out of control into the lane and it, her legs looked like they went out from under her. You know, but I've, I've been saying stuff like that about seniors on the men's side yeah. for years. So I, I'm not sitting here trying to tell you that I, I, I think anything is her fault. Yeah, right? exactly. I, I, it's, it's, it's just unfortunate, but I, I've been I, – I don't know how many – I don't know. I just, it's, I, I'm not here to take pot shots at the men's team. All right? But, yeah. yeah. But that's the thing. Like like you said, she had 40 minutes. Now, I will say with Coach Schaefer, and this is something he's done a better job at this year than last year. He, he hadn't done that lately. He doesn't put girls out there for 40 minutes, except for Shea Holly. Shea Holly's kind of the only one. But Shea also comes from a track background. She used to run, so she has endurance. Um, and she's one of those players that – She's not holding the ball. You know, mm-hmm. she's not playmaking a lot. Like, just yeah. play defense, shoot shots when you need to. So, you can play a full game yeah. like that. Um, but when it comes to Madison, you know, she's been averaging about 35, 36 minutes. Um, but you need her against Oklahoma. And so, I think that's the one difference. And maybe that's why she looked tired, you mm-hmm. know, because she hasn't played 40 minutes like Rory used to do all last year. Yep. Um, and Holly had 37 minutes, to your point, mm-hmm. and then uh, Gonzalez had 40. So yeah. they had two people playing 40 minutes in that game, and then three that are 37 or more if you yeah. if you, you bring Holly in. so. And that's my thing. Coach Schaefer, in this big game, he trusted who he trusts. That's exactly, that's right. You know, that's he's right. like, all right, we're going to win this game. It's going to be because of y'all. You know, it's going to be because of Shady Gonzalez. You're the six-year senior. Mm-hmm. You're the scorer on the team. You're the backup point guard at this point. Like, I'm going to trust you. You know, Madison, I'm going to trust you. And and, and that's where, and, and I realized, she, you know, Shaley started her career at Brigham Young. Um, and, and so she, did she just come in this year or she come in last year? Last year. Last year. So, um, she's kind of got to be the one Um on a on a possession by possession basis, to rem, to be reminding yeah. Holly and Maddie, we we got to get the ball down low. This is a trip. We I took a three last time down the court. Uh, Madison drove the lane last time down the court. We got to get the ball on the, low, on the low block. We we got to be more dynamic on the offensive end. I agree with you, um, but I still I want to go back to the game plan and just ask about the coaching. So they only took six. Threes in the entire game. Yes, yeah. they, well, they don't Oklahoma shoot threes, took yeah. thirty. Yes, exactly. So, so we were. It, it were, were a lot of jumpers, but I think they were feeding it. Um, again, is it just back to did the coaching get away? Because Oklahoma only had two people that had more than thirty minutes in the game, thirty-five and thirty-four. They had one person that was at thirty, but that's why I stated it that way, over thirty. So. Maybe a little fresher legs. Well, it's just two different to, teams. Towards I mean, the end, Oklahoma's Oklahoma's the deepest team in the conference. Um, they usually okay. go about eight, nine deep. A okay. Game. Okay. Uh, Texas, I mean, they usually go seven. You know, and and that's just the way coaches built this team because you lose Roy, then you can only trust a certain amount of people to handle the ball. That and know? that's the unfortunate part because if Roy look, if Roy's on the floor, Roy's Roy's out there for forty minutes. Yeah. But then you you can shave four minutes a game off of Maddie and uh, Shaley and Shea Holly. You can shave four to five minutes a game right off the top okay. because they can all rotate through for each other. 
because Roy's going to be out there the whole time. Mm -hmm. And so it, 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 cha it completely changes. And by the way, um, even, even Maddie can cycle through some down low. She's not always going to have to be out front. Um, with, her, with her body style at 6'1", um, you can use her in a lot of different situations and take some of the stress off of her legs. Guard legs versus uh, you know a forward or a power forward type legs um, fatigue are just different. Mm -hmm. Yeah, And I will say, like, also with the three-point shooting, like Oklahoma, that's what they're that's what they do. Yeah. You know, they shoot threes. Texas, their game plan, like I mentioned, get the ball down low. Yeah. You know, and so you got two different play styles. And, you know, it's honestly the kryptonite to the way Texas plays because mm -hmm. they don't want to speed the game up. Oklahoma does. They don't want to shoot threes. Oklahoma does. And so that's why I feel like these runs came so fast for Oklahoma is because UT's getting two points. They're getting three. I mean, it's just simple math. Mm -hmm. um, and with probabilities and the way they shoot, they're gonna they were gonna start hitting at some point, and mm -hmm. they did at the right time. Uh, and so props props to them, you know, and props to their point guard. I don't know her name on the top of my mind. I mean, off the top of my head, Tot. Tot. I mean, uh, with ten boards. I, I, I thought mean, she was gonna get that triple double. I mean, I'm not gonna boards. lie. If she could have hit a shot, she went two for twelve. Yeah, well, she she's <laughs> so known she to be a the floor general, you know, yeah. and that's exactly what she did. She kept her girls in control she kept them poised um and I, I believe i read a stat from danny davis from american statesman he said the last if you combine the two games against texas she had i think 19 assists and only one turnover and wow. so like that type of efficiency at the point guard position in those in a big game like texas props to her while grabbing 10 bo 10 boards and she's 4 11 5 1 if that you know uh, i may be a little bit disrespectful there, but she's probably like five three, five four, realistically. And she had eight assists. Uh, wow, you're spot on, five three, sir. Yeah. So ten boards at five three is crazy. Um, but that's all fight. That's all hustle. And so, not, like I'm, I'm saying, like Oklahoma has a good team. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm not going to take yeah. anything away from Oklahoma. I do feel like Maddie could have passed the ball a little bit more, and it wasn't a travel. So. <laughs> we got a call. We got a, we got a call. Let's let's jump into the phones then. Hey, caller, you there? Yeah, hey man, I just wanna, I just wanna say this. Are y'all gonna talk about Texas and Texas Tech? Goodbye. Yes. Uh, <laughs> okay, we will. We will. Um, Chaos in <laughs> cactus country. So I tell you what, we'll head, let's, let's talk about it heading into the break. All right. So um, out in Lubbock, uh, Texas goes out, gets a much needed win um, over Texas Tech, uh, not without a little, a little fracas. <laughs> not, not the first time we've seen um, a fracas in Lubbock. No. Um, uh, Got to go, boy, by oh, man, it's gonna, it's gonna date me. Um, who we had punches thrown in? Fifty-five seconds. In two thousand seven. I might have to look that up over the over the break. Punches thrown. Yeah, That's there was crazy. a there was um, a, a, a player, um, a Texas player. God Almighty, I can't believe it. it's not popping into my head. A Texas player. That's that KD team, huh? <coughs> um, it was either yeah, it was some, it was right around that era. I'd have I, I gotta I gotta look it up because it, Texas player goes um, out of bounds um, into the first row of the stands. Um, it happened to be a, 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 a pregnant woman that he kind of bumps into. He reaches out and kind of grabs her. Um, but the husband takes a swing of Texas play. No <laughs> way. Oh, does. Yes. Um, and no so, way. I was about to say, we got a couple more minutes. So, um, But, but in, in this instance, look at Texas and Texas Tech are a heated rivalry no matter what anyway. Yeah. Um, but, you know, the, the player that sets it off, right, is the Brock Cunningham. <laughs> Uh, hip check um, at the at the uh, at the out of bounds. Um, was that a flagrant two? Uh, yeah, it was yes. flagrant two. <laughs> yes, it's a flagrant one in my book, bro. Flagrant one. Uh, yeah, it's a flagrant one. That's the type of stuff I like. And this is why my friends call me Patrick Beverly. But like, that's the type of stuff. Going for the ball, it's it wasn't. It, it, see, that's that's where it goes from a, uh, a flagrant one to a flagrant two for me. He even stretches his arms Thank out for you. the ball. Yeah. He didn't go for it. You, you shot yourself in the yeah, foot. It's just a hip check. It's though. not a basketball yeah. play. If you're he, saying a basketball play, if he, he's out, fighting bro. for if it. If he at least yeah. reaches his hands out like he's trying for the ball, okay, I can see flavor one. But 
He 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 sees the player coming. Lowered that shoulder. He lowered that shoulder. Protect himself. You know, it, man. <laughs> I know Brock. I know Brock personally. <laughs> no, trust me. We all know that he did. We all we all we all one hundred percent know what he was doing. But I just think you can't. I think they threw him out because he they knew they had to. Yeah. yeah I, I mean, at true. the end of the day, if that game was in Austin, he wouldn't have gotten thrown out. Oh yeah. I think yeah. It, with it being in Lubbock and being so hostile, and they knew if they would have kept that kid in the game. Yeah, oh my goodness. Yeah. It would have been complete chaos. It was already chaos. Yeah. But it would have been even worse if they would have kept in the game. So I think that was more so let's control the environment as best as we can and kick this kid out of here and not like, yeah, yeah that was definitely a flavor too. I don't know. That's just. It, it just, it, there was not enough of a basketball play there for that's me. Fair. Yeah. It was, yeah, that's I, fair. I, I just, you know, like I said, I, um, I, I I think if he stretches his arms out, like he he's even faking like yeah, he's going yeah. for the ball because the Texas Tech player did have his arms out. Yes. He was yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. and uh, but uh, yeah, it, but I'm that's about throwing objects on the floor, gentlemen. Crazy. They started throwing water bottles, right? Yeah, yeah. Is this, beer can. Is this what yeah. we're doing? Is this is Fire this Lubbock? Is, is Lubbock. that happen in Austin? I mean, I I never thought about that. I would feel so bad about hitting somebody in the head with something like that. Yeah, it doesn't even hit, cross my yeah. mind. And I've been heated at some games. So that's that's the million dollar question with what's been talked about in college basketball over the last couple of weeks: mm-hmm. court storming, um, location mm-hmm. of the student sections yes. yeah. in in arenas. Yes. Um, because look. Most of the people that are throwing projectiles from the stands are not over the age of 40 that buy season tickets. You would hope not. That's mm-hmm. f- most of them are probably students that are probably four or five beers in mm-hmm. um, and have been waiting for this game all day long. Probably probably, probably skip two classes I mean, to, to wait for it. look at the tape. Camped out for two days. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. They so, were camping out for two yeah. days. Oh, so they're invested. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, the Cameron Crazies don't do that over at Duke. They don't camp out. I um, no, they don't. They don't throw stuff on the on the on the on the on the court. I mean, they're not tight. I don't. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> tight is bad, bro. I don't believe they sell alcohol uh, in Cameron Indoor, and I think that makes that that makes a big difference. Really? I don't. I don't. I don't believe so. So, all right, we need to get to a break. We'll be right back on the fans view, and we're back on the fans view. K A Z I eighty eight point seven. Travis Kent, Jamal January to my left. TV 24's Corey Motors to my right. Yeah. Running the board and doing it well, Douglas Washington. Loving it. All right, guys, where are we headed for the final segment? <laughs> I, I want to I see if I can uh, troll Corey just for a quick second here. Uh-oh. Corey, I didn't think Jaden Daniels was supposed to win the Heisman. You know, I was going for, for Phoenix. I didn't and, either. And then I heard the other day... Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, you were, judge, but though. it's okay though. Uh, uh, it's weird because I won't judge you by that. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm hearing that uh, there's someone that throws the ball like C.J. Stroud coming out in this draft, and I'm just kind of curious your thoughts there. Who? Uh, it's very easy to say that on the back end. I heard, I believe it was Drake May. Let's the ball go. You know, <laughs> and throws like uh, it's funny. And, and so it's funny you say that because I, I I haven't watched any Drake May, so yeah. I was hoping maybe you could help me on Drake May. So look, here, here's a, here's the deal, and it was funny because my homies and I we were literally talking about this in our group chat yesterday. Great. And I was, you know, the reason why I was so quick to say I didn't think Jaden was gonna. I don't know why I said Jaden. I was on the Heisman train. I was SEC, on the Heisman train. Now that I think about it, because it was the SEC. I said look at the numbers, but the reason why I haven't been pro Jaden lately because I've been fighting against him with my homies. My homies are saying like he's a better prospect than Drake May. I don't believe that's true. I think if you listen to all the scouts, if you watch tape, if Caleb Williams wasn't in this draft, Drake May would be the overall number one pick. <gasps> like, it wouldn't be a question. What? In my eyes. Um, look at his body type. He's 6'5", 6'6", 6'6", whatever. Somewhere yep. around there. Um, throws a beautiful deep ball. Uh, if you look at his percentages, when it came to deep passes, which is about 30 yards down the field, he was 50% completion rate. So you're talking a 50-50 chance when you throw the ball down the field. That's a high percentage. Um, and he ran for over 600 yards last year. A lot of people don't 
point that out because you know you see Jaden with you know over a thousand whatever. Yeah, like twelve hundred. But, but people think like Drake May is just standing in the pocket. Like he can move at that speed. I mean at that height, like six four, six five, running six hundred yards. And you look at his genes. His dad played ball at North Carolina. Uh, I don't know if y'all remember his brothers, brother. mm-hmm. Luke, Luke May. Mm-hmm. Like make that he, shot against that stacked Kentucky team North Carolina legend Mm -hmm, you know when it comes to college basketball you have all these genes as well I mean look Jaden Daniels had a great team around him Lily has two first round wide receivers on the roster that he was throwing the ball to Mm -hmm. still finished eight and four like Mm -hmm. I don't know I, I I think with Drake May a lot of people are having Trubisky syndrome and they're scared because of what Trubisky <laughs> did in the yeah. league, and just because they went to the same school. Same thing with CJ Stroud. Like Ohio State, people said the same thing about CJ last year. You know, he's an Ohio State quarterback, so can you really t- trust him? It's like these are these are individual players. It's not what the school builds. Mm-hmm. You know, so I think with Drake May, he doesn't fit the same category as Trubisky, and people need to start comparing him to them. So, yeah, I'm, I'm a Drake May guy. I like him a lot. Um, I do think Washington's not going to take him. I think Washington's going to enjoy the hype and take Jane Daniels. And I think Drake May is going to be a Patriot. So. Whoa. And I think New England's going to be very happy that he mm-hmm. dropped to New England. Yeah. yeah. So, And I won't be surprised, though, also, if he does drop out of number two mm-hmm. and somebody comes creeping up. Because technically the Patriots, like, I can see them moving down. I can see them getting assets. Like, they're in rebuild mode. So maybe they'll drop down and take and, a, take a McCarthy. It, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Take a McCarthy. Take a take a Penix. You know, later in the draft. Uh, but like, if you think of teams like Denver, we talked about Russell Wilson. Like, they're looking for a quarterback. And so if Drake made a guy that they really love. They're at that number twelve spot in the draft. I wouldn't be surprised they make a phone call to New England if he's still still there at three to move up. Yeah. What about Bo Nix? Yeah, same thing. I can see Bo Nix being a Patriot, too. The culture. Mm-hmm. If they move down. Yeah. I, I do think Denver, I will say this with Denver, and this sucks to be a Denver fan. They're going to reach. They're going to reach for a quarterback they in the are. draft uh, at that number 12 spot because I don't think Penix is deserving of that spot. I don't think Bo Nix is just deserving, and I definitely don't think J.J. McCarthy is deserving. But the way I've been hearing J.J. McCarthy's name pop up lately is ridiculous to me. I mean, they consider him a top 15 pick, and I said, where? Where did you see that at all year long? Um, but that's the combine. That's the draft stuff, right? Like, people start liking people, and you hear rumors, and next thing you know, this kid that's supposed to be a third-round pick, like, He's that now in the top 15. Yeah, J.J. McCartney was throwing, uh, like, across the hotel to Blake um, Blake Corum. Did you see that video? Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Mm-hmm. What, what if Russell Wilson went to New England? I know you said some of these young guys to New England. What if Wes, Russell Wilson went there? He could fit in a fan base that could embrace him. You know, he's all in when he's there, so it won't be go Hawks. It'll be go Pats. I mean, he, yeah. he'd yeah. be right in. He, he's solid. And then you could go get a Phoenix and put him behind him later, and maybe even a second round. Heck, if I'm New England, if that's the case, if you go get Wilson, first off, what do you give it up? You know, yeah, can't be a first rounder. So let's say they give up a third for Wilson. Why not go just get Marvin Harrison? Mm-hmm. Oh, in my mind, oh, like if you have a quarterback, Russell Wilson's not old. Like he, he's still a what? Three, four years still left. Been healthy. Like, like been healthy. I don't remember any season ending, maybe a finger, but no season ending injuries. I think he's been relatively yeah. healthy. And I would, I would go out and get the best player in the draft. Stays you know, in great shape. That's not a quarterback. Like, the way they talk about Marvin Harrison Jr., I don't know if y'all been reading any of these notes about this kid. I but, have. I mean, they're, they're talking about a generational mm-hmm. talent. Like, yeah. <laughs> if it wasn't for Caleb Williams, like, this guy is different mm-hmm. size speed strength and so if I'm the Patriots already got my quarterback let's say if that happens yeah I'm gonna get Marvin Harrison but I think he's going to Arizona though with Kyler so mm-hmm. if we're if we're going to have an opportunity to talk about different teams um, before we get into the hype of this time Aaron Rodgers is going to be starting for the Jets. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do they still need to go get somebody to put behind him? Do they draft a, a guy to put behind him? Because we know he's cr- a cranky dude. Yeah, for sure. What if mm-hmm. 
because not in the first. The, the Jets just said Wilson can now mm-hmm. look for a trade. Yeah. They're okay with that. So we got to put something back there, and I can't think of any. Maybe you put a Garoppolo behind him. No, nah, no, you go get a guy back from suspension. I'm thinking like Jamal mentioned it, like uh, Bo Nix, like oh. or Sam Harmon. Sam Harmon's coming. Sam Harmon too. too. Like one of these guys in the second round, second, third round. Mm-hmm. Like first round, you had to go get a tackle. Yeah, <laughs> you gotta get a lineman. Mm-hmm. I mean that that line is god awful, and you you can't go into the season next year like you did this year and see yeah. what happened. Like do last of four plays, so you gotta get a lineman. Um, and so that's that's what they're going to do for sure in the first round. But yeah, second, third round, Sam Har- I like Sam Harmon too. Mm-hmm. Sam Harmon's a heck. Spencer Rattler. Oh, talk about a kid that had a lot of potential. Him. Give yeah. him a year to learn under Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. New York is seemed like the perfect place for that kid. I mean, he he loves the spotlight. So why not Spencer Rattler? Third round. That stadium. I feel like you you got to have a deep. A good deep ball mm-hmm. in that stadium. So the small hand guys, the the the, the guys that don't jo- throw that good deep ball. I think you have to be smart. I know we'll we'll go wherever we can go, but I think there's something about throwing that ball in that stadium. Eli got away with a lot. Uh, he had a, a relatively strong arm and made it through. But when I look at the backups and the people that have filled in, I really do think that those wins. Mm-hmm. They affect that ball in that stadium. So, and speaking about you mentioned Eli, I wouldn't be surprised if the Giants go up and get a quarterback in the first round. I was I was mm-hmm. going to ask I, you all about that. That's an, like if Drake May's available at three, that's another team. I mean, you know, they have the number six overall pick. If Drake May's available at three, I would not be shocked if the Giants move up to, to go get him. Put behind Daniel Jones, or are we trying to, to compete, train? No, to compete, Jones. compete with Daniel definitely. Jones. Okay. Yeah, I don't. I don't think they're all in on Daniel. What if he wins? What if the, the 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 young guy comes in and wins it? What if we got a Garoppolo, yeah. uh, Purdy situation? Now you have a rookie contract to start building around. Mm-hmm. That's what you do. I mean, that's it's a good thing if he wins. But nobody's gonna take that contract, Dane Jones. Well, it's only a two year deal, so I mean, you're kind of just waiting it out for a year. Yeah. You know, forty million. Um, that's forty million. It's a lot of money. Yeah, it's a lot of money. <laughs> Yeah, I know. But at least, you know, space. at least you know, like it's not a it's not a five year deal. You yeah, know? so yeah. you're not locked in like a Russell Wilson deal. You yeah. know that was tough, uh, or like what New New Orleans is in right now with David Carr. I mean Derek Carr. My apologies. <coughs> <laughs> Show my Texan fandom. Just Austin's <laughs> own. Do you think he's going to stay in Tampa Bay? Uh, yeah, I think they'll give him the back. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I. Baker Mayfield for anyone who doesn't know. I, I don't. I, what, what are the choices they have? Yeah. yeah. Well, I I don't know where they can go after this because <coughs> they got to spend money on Mike Evans, and if Mike Evans leaves, I think he is. Do, does he look as good with Mike Evans gone? Mike Evans bailed him out a lot, mm-hmm. and I, yeah. I I just would would you still be sold on him if you know you're losing Mike Evans, and so maybe you go out and maybe you do something else. Maybe oh man. I mean, but this is a deep wide receiver Russell? class though. Mm-hmm. It's a deep wide receiver really? class, yeah. so I think that's what Tampa Bay is looking at. That's why I don't think they're going to re-sign Mike Evans. I mean, they're looking at this class of like, I mean, you talk about Malik Neighbors, you talk about Marvin Harrison. I mean, I can the list goes on. Roma Dunze, mm-hmm. Ad Mitchell from mm-hmm. Texas. Yeah. I mean, he's a dude. Uh, I'm thinking about the other kid. From, I I've heard this other <laughs> kid from LSU, this Brian Thomas kid. Oh yeah. Um, apparently he's nasty. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's scouts out there that are saying like I don't know why people are talking about neighbors. They should be talking about this kid. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's high praise. So uh, this this wide receiver class is so deep. So if I'm Tampa Bay, yeah, let Mike Evans walk. Mm-hmm. Go give me a young kid uh, and see if he can. Now, not everyone that didn't work for everybody. Look at Quinn Johnson up in L.A. with the Chargers. Yeah, that didn't work out too well at all. Uh, but then <coughs> look at Dave Flowers in Baltimore. That worked out pretty well. Are you guys? Rice, Kansas City. Are you guys going to be shocked with Harbaugh going out to San? Well, sorry, going out there with with Herbert? Do we shocked. have high expectations for him going into this year? I or is this going to? We're going to let him off the hook uh-huh. for this year. I got high expectations. I got high expectations. <coughs> yeah, too. You, I, would, too. I would too. I mean, I look. I'll, I'll cut him some slack. It's not like it's a ready-made. Um, Top contender, yeah, pretty freaking close. But it, but they but but they've got they've got the most. I feel like they've got the most important piece in place. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I think that I think the fans, I think their fans think that they're instantly a contender. Yeah. I I think they got to figure out the running back situation. Yeah, because Eckler's a free agent. 
or something. Something's coming up with that clear. Hey, Derek um, Henry's out there. Free uh, agent. Y'all don't yeah. see that? Mm-hmm. I don't know. Because that's a great coach, and I, I think and he, he does love to run the ball. And he does love to run, run the yeah, ball, for sure. I think it's a great fit. <coughs> yeah. So. You, got a, you got a reliable running back. You and got you, tools. You got those receivers. And they hired Greg Roman from Baltimore. Uh, so, you know, with, with him, he loves. He's a run game guy. I mean, so. And, and Derek, Derek does really good with the media. He's got those commercials. He's doing mm-hmm. the, uh, what's it, the, not the Allstate, the. Uh, uh, Progressive? The, no, the the, the red. The State, State Farm. Farm. State Farm. He does the State Farm commercial. Remember, he put the whole living room oh, on, yeah, the, on, the, on the tackling site and dragged it. So that's, mm-hmm. uh, I think uh, it could be a good, as he starts to work on the next part of his career. Yeah. If he finishes up his time, maybe there, you're already in L.A. Heck, man. I, I Look, if you go out and get Derrick Henry, and let's just say, you know, you have Keenan Allen, you have Mike Williams on the outside. Yeah. <sighs> Go draft Jatavian Sanders. Oh, just throwing it out there yeah. in Texas at that tight end position. Now you got to do. I was going to say, you know, this is a great, this is so, a great draft. For so to ends. me, like, pair that all with Herbert. I mean, he, he can make some shake. I'm a Herbert guy. I, I think Herbert has been screwed over by offensive coordinators going in and out the building yeah. with wide receivers getting hurt every single year. This is the first year Keenan Allen stayed healthy his whole career for Herbert and so you saw what happened you know he went crazy so I think Herbert's a dude and he's he always puts them in the game it's just their defense always gives us the game up um and so I think now like if you have a culture with a dude like Harbaugh he'll get the best out of Herbert and Harbaugh believes in him Harbaugh talked about Herbert being the best quarterback in the league in his eyes um, they, so. they they have the fifth pick yeah that's Herbert. what I'm saying so if you could go get a, a Henry and whatever you're going to do with this number five, go that high on a tight end? No, you don't go high unless you get okay. Brock Bowers. Yeah. Um, it, I think for the mock drafts I've seen, they talked about getting that um, that edge rusher from UCLA. Yeah. I, I, okay. I, can't, I literally can't pronounce it. What, yeah, what, what yeah. school is Bowers at? Georgia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That end. guy. Yeah, that um, guy. Oh. But they do need Dean Lyman. And mm-hmm. so I've also seen Mac mock draft with Byron Murphy at number five from Texas, mm-hmm. um, oh. which is kind of mm-hmm. it's the highest I've seen him. But I have seen it. So they need help on the D-line because I think they're they're now seeing the the repercussions of the Khalil Mack trade. Yeah. Um, that whole experiment with him and Joey Bosha hasn't really worked out. No. Um, so they got to get some new blood in there. And I think you got to re- re- revamp that D-line. Um, and you got to get off that contract because him, Khalil Mack, and Joey Bosa are taking up $70 million. Yep. Between just two of them. It's time to move it. <laughs> <laughs> I think you gotta move it. That's I think a you gotta lot move of money. On. Oh, okay, so uh, this is we're gonna stay in Texas. Um, Cowboys? No, no. Let's no. talk Cowboys, man. Oh, oh, okay. Well, we'll get to him. Okay, then Kyler Murray from Texas. I just wanted to oh, talk about, about that. Him? He's healthy. Yeah. And I'm hearing a lot of good things. The coach is saying all the right things. Make or break year for Kyler if he stays healthy. Yeah, for sure. I think so. I, I think I think, I think he got it there. Because if he doesn't get it, we're starting to look at backup for the remainder of your time. Well, the, the tough part for Arizona is that this was the year that, <laughs> and I know management is in a tough situation. Because this is this is the year. This is the draft. We just talked about three quarterbacks yeah. with Caleb, Jaden, and Drake May. I yeah. mean, but we also still mentioned Bo Nix. We also still mentioned Michael Penix. We mentioned yeah. J.J. McCarthy. Like, this was the draft that if you're going to move on from Kyler, yep. you do it this year. This year. But he got hurt. So you can't not give him a shot to prove himself, and so you keep him around. But now, if you look at next year's draft class, they there's nobody. I mean, Shador, you know, yeah. Quinn maybe Ewers, yeah, Quinn. yeah. I mean, I guess maybe Carson Beck, you know, maybe Carson Beck. But that's not that's not moving the needle for me, well, you know. And so Jackson we also don't know what their pick is going to be. Yeah. We know this exactly. year they got the fourth pick. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, so then, if you guys are going to give him a chance, so you're saying we don't draft a quarterback behind him? You can't. Then no, what do you what do you go can't. get? Just uh, off the top they, of your head. I mean, you, yeah, you go get Marvin Harrison. Yeah, they literally said okay. if Marvin Harrison is still on the board, they're going to take him. You go get the next Larry Fitzgerald. Mm-hmm. Ooh. And he stays there his whole career. That's a that's a big name. I, I don't think he's that high. <laughs> the, way, the way they be talking about J- his Jamal kid. Jamal had the same reaction. I, I don't think he's that high. Wondering. Like I'm saying, they're, they're talking about this kid as a generational talent. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the stuff that I hear about him and the stuff that people say, and if you just watch the tape, I mean, mm-hmm. 
the things he did with CJ Stroud and then he backed it up and did it with the freshman quarterback last year. Like Dude was cooking. He is different. Um at six four with a four four speed. Like there's a reason why he's not doing anything at the combine. Mm-hmm. He doesn't have to. <laughs> Everyone knows he's that dude. Um and so yeah, I, I think you go out there and get potentially the next Larry Fitzgerald. So all right, so you said you wanted to do the Cowboys. McCarthy came out and he said he's not going to the combine. What does that tell you? Yeah, that was. I don't know. That's what the twenty. Know, you get they, that? They've got the twenty fourth. I don't. No, 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 no. There, there's no offensive. With the, so McCarthy's not there. Um, uh, oh what? Um, the defensive court, new defensive coordinator. No, Zimmer. Zimmer's not there. Yeah. Um, you know, I don't. I, I'm sure um, um, that the, uh, uh, the scouting department's there. Um, you know, from from a coaching standpoint, um, you know, look, I don't I don't think that they're analyzing the routes the receivers are running during this. They're, they're gonna they're gonna see all these guys again, either calling them in to the facility or going out to their pro day as well. Um, I think the bigger issue is the interview portion. Um, I think a lot of player, uh, I think a lot of coaches value that time to be able to interview some of the players during the, uh, the during the combine. So they're not going to get that. Um, I'm not sure it's as big a deal as what it feels like, um, but I guess you know. Everyone's going to have to uh, judge that next year when the draft happens. If we all go, man, that was a terrible draft. Or, <laughs> hey, I think they made some good choices here. I, it's going to be hard to to evaluate it. Um, but like I said, I I don't I don't know that it's a huge deal yet. But it is surprising. Let, let, let's let's face it, it's surprising. I I, I know I know Zimmer's a new coach and all. Um, and and what they said was they're having coaching meetings. Um, Back in Dallas, but you know, back in Arlington. So, or actually in Frisco, up at the Star Complex. But you know, I guess maybe they're watching on TV. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> yeah. yeah. There'll, there'll be tape. There's tape available. I'll, I'll do that. That that's what he said. Is he'll be watching the tape. Um, I just want to see if you guys are going to read into that for those two. So curious. Twenty fourth pick. I think we are going to lean which way what what are what are we taking what do you guys think we're taking at 24 uh you gotta go defense in my mind like and you gotta go d tackle or dn oh. or linebacker like it's a front seven you gotta fix that front seven so with zimmer you know he's been vocal about needing big bodies and you know it, to their credit they drafted mozzie smith last year and mm-hmm. a lot of people aren't giving them that credit because Maji didn't play well, but they did at least draft a big human last year. Uh, and so I think you got to cut your losses and be like, look, we may have missed on that pick. Yeah. So let me go out and get another DT. Um, so like, I, I wouldn't be shocked that they get to Vondre Sweat. Like mm-hmm. it, I think at that, it, it would not surprise it me. Wouldn't surprise it, me. It, it wouldn't surprise me a bit. A run stopper. Now the biggest knock on Sweat is his pass recognition abilities. But guess what? But you got Michael Parsons. So yeah. Who really? Who really cares? Um, and so Andy Law. Let me respect Demarcus mm-hmm. Lawrence. And so get a run stopper, and that's exactly what Devondre Sweat is. And so yeah, I think you go DT at that position. Whether it's Sweat, Johnny Newton from Illinois. Mm-hmm. If Byron Murphy's there, I don't Byron think Murphy. he will be there though. Mur- Murphy's think, likely gone. I, Murphy's gone then. Then. I haven't projected two two uh, two two uh, picks before. Which uh, there 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 are, there are draft there are projections out there with he as high as, as like eleven or twelve. Yeah, oh, like I said, man. I saw five. All right, with yeah, the Chargers. I, wow, I saw five. That okay. shocked me. I don't think he'll go there. He, he is a consensus top fifteen player on the board. And after yesterday, he made his money. Yeah. I mean, what, what do you guys think about a cornerback, Cooper DeJean, out of Iowa? Oh, man. You know, he, he there's been a lot of there's a lot of yeah, there's a lot of talk because of his race. Yes, so, so if he were <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, uh, a la Jason Seahorn, <laughs> it's been a while. He can move, bro. Yeah, he can move. I mean, that's I think that's the Patriots take you. Not a bad yeah. guy. Okay. <laughs> 
it's Boston again. It's Boston again. It feels like a Patriot to me. I, I can't put my finger on it. But, it just feels like, but not for real though. Like I, I think you go resign Stephon Gilmore. Like you don't worry about corner. Yeah. You're good on corner. Like go get your guy back. Mm-hmm. And I'd also think to your point, that's why McCarthy's not there. To, I, I think with they already at know? the combine. Well, in this point at the combine. A lot of people say that's like the mecca where you get deals done. That's why a lot of people expect this Fields deal to be done pretty soon because now you're in a group but all the GMs are all together in one building and they can talk face-to-face, not over the phone. I think with the Cowboys, they didn't feel they need to be there because they're just going to re-sign everybody. Yeah. Uh, and J.J. Jones kind of said, said that and uh, basically said, we're going all in on the people that we have. you know. And I think they're going to re-sign CD, going to re-sign Stephon and run it back with some draft picks. That last thing you said, run it back, running back, free agent Derrick Henry still out there. Yeah. But that's money. Can that happen? I don't think you can. Anybody I don't, in agreement? I don't think they're in a cap position where they can yeah. spend that much money. Um, I think they cobble together the running back room next year. Damn. Um, I, really I, I think you go out there and get Jonathan Brooks. I, I keep talking about Texas mm-hmm. players, mm-hmm. but like, no, it's a fit. It's if a fit. fit. It's a fit. I, I think it's no more way to running back coming out, so. Yeah, yeah, and you can get him in the second <laughs> round. Like you don't have to spend the first round talent on him, so you can get him in the second round. Get Tavon Sweat in the first round, and you'll be good to go. The most difficult part about this draft, from the Cowboys' perspective, is because I, I agree with you. I think if Tavon Sweat's there, I think it's D tackle. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Period. Yeah. Um, and 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 I, I selfishly hope it's Tavon Sweat because I'd love to see a, a, another Longhorn playing in front of Demarvin and Overshone next year. Mm-hmm. Crazy. But. Um, the, the the problem with this draft is that now you're chasing a position. You draft Mozzie Smith last year. He does play 300 snaps. Um, I, I don't know that we can call him a bust yet. He's still on the roster. He's part of a rotation. Yeah. Clearly, they expected more out of him last year. So now you're chasing the position with another draft pick. Um, and I think that what, what, what that affects is... Um, where, where are they going to go get their run and hit linebacker? DeMarvin Overshone is going to, assuming he's healthy, is going to fit into the linebacking core next year. But they really still need yeah. a middle run and hit linebacker. But there's no one worthy of that pick. Though. No, no I, I'm not. 24? Yeah, no, I'm. I'm I, I, I'm I, like, there's no Roquan Smith in, the, yeah. in this draft or anything like that. I, I, I 100% get that. Um, you know, well, I wouldn't want to reach. You know what I'm saying? That's, and that's my mindset. If I'm front office, like, if I know this is a deep D tackle class, which it is, it's very deep, um, and I can get a arguably could have been the best D tackle in last year's draft, but just because he's in the draft with Johnny Newton and Byron Murphy, he's mm-hmm. not. Go get sweat, you know, because that still fills the need. Because mm-hmm. the need, even though you drafted Mozzie, like, and I get your point, like, you yeah. don't want to chase after that position, but it's. It's a need, and that's the reality that you live in. And who knows? Maybe that makes Mozzie compete even harder because now, oh, y'all went out and got another dude in the first round in my position. Yeah. People take that personally. They do. So they do. I, I just, I, I, I don't want this to feel like the Greg Ellis, Kavika Pittman, Shante Carver mm. fiasco of having to draft three defensive ends over a what a, f- a four or five draft cycle as they were trying to chase their taco. next yeah taco char- t- they were trying to chase their next pass rushing defensive end yeah. and you look around and the offensive line is completely depleted yeah because you're you're using too many draft picks on one position which pushes down your corner and your wider say all those picks later down that are extremely important but you're not you're having to use them on um other positions and so well at least that that price is cheaper yeah. If you go get a first round DT compared to a first round DE. That's for sure. So, that's I mean, if you sure. want to look at a positive, that's one positive that you can take out of it. Yeah. That's that's right. For that first round, the only DE that I'm I'm drawing interest is Jared Verse out of Florida State. Yeah. That's the only one I'm really seeing interest in, at least in the top 20. And that's if he drops that far to the Cowboys. Like, Cowboys, are, that's, a, that's a tough spot um, for what they need. Because, like I said, there's no linebacker that's mm-hmm. good enough to get that to me. Good enough to get that pick at 24. Highest linebackers I'm looking at coming out of Alabama, Dallas Turner. Yeah, he's a That Russian. would be Dallas. Ah, uh, that could be, <laughs> you know, <laughs> he'll, be a, he'll be a top that 10 That doesn't pick. do anything. Okay. And then Latu, Latu, Latu mm-hmm. from UCLA. UCLA. And he's, he's, he's a top he's, 10 pick. He's athletic, but he's going to be, he's going to go too early. He'll be gone too. All right. Yeah, and though they're both rushers. 
they're not when they say line like those are outside linebackers. Yeah, they got them as outside. Those are edges. Yeah, they're three four. Yeah, they're three four. I just didn't know. I thought I didn't know their size. I thought maybe we could have had a tweener and switch it up. But okay. Yeah. I lastly, mm-hmm. uh-huh. I guess I just got to ask you guys one last question then. So, if Brooks is available in the second round, does Dallas go get him? I think you have to. I mean, the guy who did the surgery is literally the Dallas team doctor. Uh, and so, if anyone knows how he's recovering, yeah. it's this yeah. guy. Uh, so, you have all the inside information. You have all the medical history. The guy who did the surgery is in your building. To me, it's a perfect fit because you need a running back. I agree. Um, and Pollard, you let him walk. So, unfortunately. But... Brooks said today at the combine, by the way, he was at the podium. He mentioned that he'll be ready by – he's running right now, and uh, he's back, and he'll be ready by training camp. So he won't miss any preseason. So get him ready, get him get him in shape, and get him on the field. Yeah, for sure. All right, so um, we appreciate the calls. We appreciate everybody listening in. We'll see you back here next week on the Fans View, KAZI.